Hey what's going on guys and welcome to our second tutorial. Today is going to be an easy one and we're going to go over another ideal op amp. However, in today's case, we're going to have a capacitor in our circuit just to show how that works. Okay, let's get started. In the previous video, I arbitrarily chose directions for currents entering and leaving the nodes. In this video, I'm going to show you that the directions of the currents don't matter at all. No matter which directions you choose, your equations will come out correct. So, in this circuit, let's say that all of the currents are entering the node and none of the currents are leaving the node. In this case, we have I1 plus I2 equals 0, as I1 and I2 are both entering the node and there is no currents leaving the node. Okay, just as before, we're going to find equations for I1 and I2. For I2, it's important to remember that the voltage drop over the component depends on the current. As the current is flowing into this node here, we start with V out minus the voltage of that node, which is still zero as this is an ideal op amp, divided by the resistance it traveled through, R2. Before we do I1, it's important to point out that the resistance of a capacitor is given by 1 over SC, where C is the capacitance of the capacitor, and S is simply J omega, where omega is our frequency in radians per second. Don't worry, we're going to go into this further in future, but for now, let's just work out the equation for the circuit. So for I1, we have... V in minus the voltage of that node, which is zero, divided by the resistance of the capacitor, which is one on SC1. Now, when dividing by a fraction, that's the same as inverting the fraction and multiplying by it. We can remove the one on SC1 and then simply have VI SC1. So now, let's use our KCL described above to relate these voltages and resistances to one another. I1, which is simply VI SC1 plus I2, which is VO divided by R2 equals 0. Now, as we're solving for VO divided by VI, let's multiply through by R2 and remove that denominator. So, after multiplying through by R2, we have VI SC1 R2 plus VO. The R2s cancel, and then we're left with equals 0. 0 times R2 is still 0. Now we can subtract VI SC1 R2 to the other side, which gives VO equals negative VI SC1 R2. And then finally, we can divide through by VI, giving us VO divided by VI equals negative SC1 R2. And that's our final result. So you might be thinking, in the previous video, I explained how the amplifier would amplify signals over any frequencies. In this result, however, since our S component is made up of J omega, this would indicate that the magnitude of the output signal depends on the frequency of the input signal, and this is very true. However, for now, this is beyond the scope, and I just want you to be able to derive the equation, and in future, we'll go into more depth about what this means. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, if you had any problems at all, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you in the next one where we're going to tackle one more ideal op amp before we move on to some harder stuff. See you then.